So now it's the time for our serial entrepreneur, Dayan Vitanov, an MBA from Stanford and currently serving as the Chief Marketing Officer at Instant Gaming Startup Playco, uh, who was also the CEO and co-founder of uh, Chobo Labs, a mobile e-sports startup. Uh, he's founded many, many companies and, you know, we are so, so uh, proud to have you here, uh, Dayan. So welcome. And, uh, you know, we are really, really looking forward to your session. Thank you, Parva, for uh, the kind introduction. Let me go ahead and just share my screen. And I hope you all can see that screen as well as hear me okay. Wonderful. Yes, we can. Uh, all right. Well, first off, thank you once again. And it's a real privilege to be here with all of you today. Uh, I thought I would kick things off by introducing myself since we don't really know each other. And then I'd love to share with you all uh, kind of my thoughts and my biggest passion would be in gaming. But first things first, uh, as I said, my name is Dejan and I am originally from Bulgaria where I grew up and went to high school. I specialized in mathematics and informatics. Afterwards, I went to Germany where I got my bachelor degree at Jakobs University Bremen. And finally, in 2007, I arrived here in the San Francisco Bay Area, where I enrolled at Stanford to get my master's in business administration. What attracted me to the San Francisco Bay Area was entrepreneurship. And indeed, that's what my career has been all about. I've had the good fortune to build three different companies. The first one was called CPP Home, and I started that while still in Bulgaria. To be quite honest with you, I didn't really know what starting a company meant. Uh, it wasn't even my idea. At the time, I was programming quite a bit. And a friend said, hey, do you, I have this idea. Do you want to join me? Do you want to give it a shot? And next thing you know, uh, the, the company grew. And we even got acquired a couple of years later. Once I moved here to Silicon Valley, I wanted to do more, bigger, better. And that's why I started Philanthropedia right after graduate school. And a few years later, I started Chobo Labs, which is a mobile electronic sports startup that got acquired by Playco a couple of years ago. For those of you who don't know much about Playco, I just wanted to say a couple of words. We are the largest publisher of instant games. What that means is that we partner with social media companies, instant messengers, and similar uh, social media companies uh, such as Facebook and Snapchat and Line and Viber, and our games are played through there. There is no download. You just click a link and you're instantaneously transported into the experience. So with that quick background out of the way, I want to move on to the main topic, which is my love and passion for gaming. I got introduced to gaming when I was just about the age of some of the others that spoke earlier today. I was nine. My dad came back from home to home one day with a computer. Uh, he never used the computer himself. He just read that computers were going to be the next big thing and decided to buy one for us. Uh, and I was instantly in love. I got an old machine, certainly by any stretch, by, by kind of today's comparison. Uh, it looked exactly like this one on the picture, an Intel 386 running uh, DOS, an ancient programming operating system, but I was in love nonetheless. And the main reason that I was in love were all the games that I could play. Here are just a small, small fraction of the many games that uh, I was uh, in love with back then. Uh, there, these were the days when a lot of genres were being established. First person shooters such as Doom, Duke Nukem and Quake, fighting games such as Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter, adventure games like Super Mario Bros. and Jazz Jack Rabbit. These were all brand new things at the time. And they were absolutely enthralling and exciting. Uh, and I think that the main reason that they were so exciting to me is because of how they challenged the brain. One of the best ways to illustrate this is with a game called The Incredible Machine. 
you can see here on my screen a little video from that game. And what you may notice is that the game is very physical. In other words, you have to actually use things like gravity to get the ball to go down the stairs to hit the lever just right, or maybe the balloon to go up, or the scissors to cut a string, and so forth and so forth. So really, games are a puzzle, a puzzle for the brain. And what makes them exciting is trying to solve that puzzle and, and overcome whatever challenges the coders of the games have created for us. Another thing that I found especially exciting, uh, and I think you guys were talking about it just a little while ago, is that games are very, very easy to mod or to modify. What I have here on the left is a screenshot from Duke Nukem 3D, which is a very old game at this point. But what made it exciting was that it was very easy to create new maps for. You could, uh, this is a top-down view of a map. You could very easily take an existing level and, and go ahead and, and create uh, a, a new one uh, by just modifying the sprites. This what made it very exciting because uh, you know, I could basically go and do my own experience. And today, uh, that certainly, that legacy and that idea certainly continues. You heard earlier today from Roblox, Minecraft is another example and these, just are, these are just a couple of examples of games that are very easy to customize, to modify, to build unique experiences with. And, and I, I found that uh, uh, so darn exciting. And I thought we'd pause here for a quick poll. Uh, do you create your own games or modify existing ones? Uh, perhaps you start from scratch, uh, or maybe you, you modify uh, something that already exists. Uh, or maybe you haven't tried yet, but are thinking of doing that soon. When you get a chance, please vote. I'd love to see where you guys are at. So almost 60% are creating your own games from scratch. That is very impressive and really quite hard to do. So kudos to you. For those of you who haven't tried yet, but want to, I wanted to let you know to not be afraid. Start small. Take something that already exists and just maybe clone it and change one or two or three things. Start small so that you can learn how it works. Or maybe go online and watch a YouTube video to learn the basics. This is the beauty of the internet today is anybody can get started. You don't need to know all the things. You can just make one tiny step and then another and then another. And then next thing you know, you will know so much uh, and you feel much more comfortable to create ever more exciting and advanced experiences. Speaking of exciting and advanced experiences, for me, once I had started modifying games, I found that games were a fantastic getaway to the broader digital world, to computers beyond just playing, beyond just modifying the games towards creating new things, whether that may, meant creating new games, or maybe creating different sorts of programs, websites, apps, and everything else. And you heard earlier with the many wonderful ideas that were shared, that many of you are already thinking about that. Amazing, keep doing it. For me, I started by learning some programming languages. At this point, these programming languages are a little bit old. Things like Pascal and Logo and Assembly and Visual Basic. If you were doing it today, you should definitely focus on more modern ones like TypeScript and JavaScript and React. And I know that all these keywords and these names, they sound so confusing for those of you who don't have experience. But the best thing about all of these cases is that you can get started with very, very small things. You can take an existing project and you can modify it and just make one little step to build a first app, even something as simple as the computer saying, Hello, you know what? That's the first step. And then from there, you can make it do and say all sorts of other things. And here I thought I'd take another poll because I'm very curious to learn more. How many of you know programming languages? Are you perhaps experts in multiple ones and already feel quite comfortable despite just how young the audience seems to be? Or maybe you have advanced coding knowledge in you know, one or maybe a couple at most. Or perhaps you're a beginner or don't have coding skills yet. Uh, when you get a chance, and if we can pull up the poll, I'd love to, to have your vote. 
So maybe about half of you have some coding knowledge, uh, which is fantastic. You know, keep building on it step by step. For those of you who don't have coding skills yet or are beginners, again, fear not. You can start very simply, whether that's following a tutorial online, an educational video, or maybe just taking an existing game and trying to make it a little bit better, maybe make your life a little bit easier in it. I certainly remember the early days and how confusing and challenging it can be. But once you make a couple of steps, next thing you know, you feel so much more comfortable. The next thing I wanted to share with you is uh, when I discovered uh, uh, competitive gaming or what we now call uh, electronic sports or esports. In the late 90s, early 2000s, when I was growing up, internet, the internet got faster, computers got better. And we had this thing called internet cafes show up for the first time where everybody, even those that didn't have the best computers or internet, could actually join and play games. And that's when competitive gaming started gaining momentum. I personally sp spent four years as a professional gamer. I played StarCraft Brood War, which is a strategy game for two years. And I played Counter-Strike 1.6, which is a first-person shooter game for two years as well. I had a team, we had a sponsor, we spent quite a bit of time training, went to different tournaments, and to be honest, lost quite a few of them. Uh, but we also had the good fortune to win a few too. And this was unforgettable uh, because it was just a, such a social experience. You know, we would play together. Before then, games were mostly played kind of by yourself. And that's very exciting for the brain and for solving puzzles. But once you have other people involved, uh, then it gets to the next level. And, you know, when we started, electronic sports and competitive games were not that uh, big or popular as they are today. This is a picture from an internet cafe. And this is where a lot of the early tournaments would actually take place. You know, you'd kind of come together with your teammates and try to uh, uh, defeat an opponent that is sitting somewhere else in the, in the, in the cafe. Today, esports has truly grown uh, to a major industry that draws many spectators, many sponsors, with tournaments, sometimes even with millions of dollars in, in prizes, which of course is very exciting. Some of these events uh, would take place in person when coronavirus is not uh, such, a, uh, such a terrible thing. And even you couldn't do that. You could actually take uh, do virtual tournaments uh, on places like YouTube and Twitch, where very large crowds uh, gather to watch the best people in a given game compete against one another. And this is such a, an advanced and exciting space that even the cutting edge AI research happens on it. Here you can see a screenshot from AlphaStar, which is a artificial intelligence that is playing StarCraft, arguably the hardest game out there. And it is uh, uh, not only playing it well, it is very uh, commonly defeating some of the top human players. This is a brand new thing that wasn't possible even a couple of years ago. And uh, I think, uh, you know, whether you're interested in playing the games, modifying the games, competing in the games, or just doing advanced research, uh, Esports uh, offers all these many, many different options. So I thought before I continue on with Esports to just do another quick poll here. How many of you are actually familiar with competitive gaming? Are you perhaps pro gamers, uh, grandmasters or masters in the latter? Or perhaps you have heard a little bit about Esports but don't know too much about it. Or maybe some of you are wondering what actually is Esports? Uh, please vote, I'd love to know. All right, actually, this is a pretty even, uh, even crowd here. Well, for the pro gamers out there, I will see you later. And for those of you who know a little bit less about esports, let me go ahead and share with you what I thought is so exciting and special about them. So there are really three things that I thought uh, uh, make, let me just go back here, three things that made a big impression on me. The first one is quick thinking. Electronic sports are fundamentally about people playing against other people. And that means that they challenge the mind truly like nothing else. 
In a typical single player game, uh, there's a puzzle to be solved. And once you figure out how the creator of the game set up that puzzle, you can hopefully proceed to win. It can still be very challenging, but the puzzle is finite. With esports, every person is trying to think how to outsmart uh, and outplay their opponent. That means that the puzzle is ever changing. You actually never know. There is no right solution. You have to think on your feet, typically very quickly because those games are played in real time. How do you actually uh, outplay your opponent? And that is truly a special um, a kind of property of competitive games. Another very special property is team play. Uh, to win, you have to be able to come together as a team. Whether you have a professional team that trains together or you create an ad hoc team just by playing online with, with friends or even with strangers, you have to be able to figure out how to actually come together, create a strategy that makes sense, and then execute that strategy to, to prevail. Uh, and that's such a valuable skill uh, to have in life in general. Uh, and electronic sports and competitive gaming exposes you to it with every match. And finally, competition. You know, in life, you often find that you have to compete because everybody's, you know, of course, trying to ever be better. And esports is one of the most uh, kind of best exposures for that. Uh, outplaying your opponents is the ultimate challenge because they are trying to outplay, outsmart, outthink you as well. And whether you're doing a strategy game or a more action-packed game, doing that is, is very hard. And for the pro gamers out there in the audience, you know how difficult it is to be a top 1% or so player in, in any of these competitive games. And for those of you who are perhaps less familiar with esports or maybe just uh, are not familiar at all, you know, the, the, the way that the games are, are, are organized is through rankings. And these rankings kind of reflect just how often you win or you lose against other people. So very similarly to chess, you end up having a ranking that is quite coveted and certainly very, very hard to achieve uh, to, to be one of the top players. So it is those reasons combined that captured my imagination, my attention, uh, and create my excitement for esports, something that I continue to do and to follow even today. When I put it all together, uh, I think... I think that games are a wonderful introduction to the world of computers, and they teach many valuable skills, whether it's about how you think uh, quickly on your feet, strategically, critically, how to play together with others uh, to achieve something together, in, in, often in real time, or how to participate in a competition, uh, not just uh, you know, to win, but also the inevitable many, many losses uh, as you play these games. Uh, they teach you something about resilience and about never giving up, as somebody said earlier. And I find those skills to be really quite special and quite valuable. I wanted to talk a little bit about careers, uh, just kind of to wrap things up here. But before I did that, I wanted to do another poll. For those of you that have thought about it already, I would love to know what kind of career you're thinking about. Are you thinking perhaps that you want to start a company? Maybe you want to join a young startup? Uh, or perhaps join a big company, or maybe you want to be a teacher or a scientist uh, and go into academia, or maybe it's something else that I just forgot and didn't list. And if you're not sure, that's quite all right too. I'd love to know. Please vote when you can. Wow, this is a very special group because <laughs> nearly half of you actually want to start a company. Well, kudos to you. Starting a company can be incredibly rewarding and certainly picking up skills related programming and critical thinking and, and kind of creating things from scratch. That's a wonderful first step, an opportunity to kind of learn how to do things, uh, which is great. For those of you who are more interested in other things, uh, or perhaps you're just not sure, uh, I, I, I wanted to let you know that truly the, the, the world is your oyster. You can do whatever you decide to do. You do not have to start a company. You can join an existing company. You can be a teacher. Uh, you can be a scientist. You can probably go into anything that you put your mind to. The world is truly your oyster. Games can help prepare you for that, again, by developing your thinking, your skill set, your social skills, and so forth. And that's wonderful. But beyond just any given game or any given competition, just kind of 
picking up skills and learning and, 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 and doing everything that you guys have been doing, which was truly remarkable, I think is the best possible preparation. Um, and you can achieve anything you set your mind to as long as you stick with it. And if you're not sure, I think that's quite all right. Most of us actually aren't sure for, well, most of our lives. Uh, it is hard to find the right thing. And so my advice for you all would be to just try different things. You know, you, you can go and you can kind of passively watch videos about different industries or companies, or you can just try, maybe do an internship, maybe do a small project, maybe work with your teachers to do kind of exciting little uh, research into into these things and and as you learn more what you uh, what perhaps starts with very fuzzy you know not sure what to do the, the answer will start coming to you because experience is the best teacher you will find what you naturally gravitate towards and what you want to do more of and you find what perhaps maybe is exciting but not for you maybe you just don't want to spend your time on it so with that I wanted to thank you so much for having me here it's been a real pleasure to listen to the projects earlier and to be able to talk to you all here today. And of course, I'm happy to uh, go and answer any questions uh, right now. Perfect, Dan, this was fantastic. And we do have questions from the students. They were very excited to submit the questions beforehand. So let me take ask you a couple of questions on their behalf, okay? Sure. So the first question really was, uh, you know, how do you get these ideas and what inspires you to build these games that become such a big, huge success, Dian? Yeah, I think that's a wonderful, wonderful question. And I think that inspiration is the sort of thing that requires that you kind of roll up your sleeves and start doing things. I think that if you're kind of just passively observing the world, it is hard to have concrete ideas. It is hard to have inspiration. Inspiration requires that you get involved. Whether that means noticing something, something at the grocery store and then having the idea to help uh, you know, blind people, or it means that as you play games, you observe perhaps a certain level or a map or a game and you have, you know what? You have an idea, you know what? It would be really great if I could just change this one thing and then you know, modify things. That's the sort of engagement, you know, that, that generates passion and ideas and creativity. And th there's two reasons for that. I think one reason is because you get to see what others have done. Innovation and, and ideas, they're all about connecting dots. So if you can observe what others have done, you can say, well, wait a minute, this is very smart and very interesting, but actually if I change this and this, it will be interesting and new and exciting. And so that's really um, kind of how you go about it. You know, one step at a time, you just engage with the world, whether that's the virtual or the physical world, and the ideas, they will start naturally flowing because you, you wouldn't be able to help yourself. You always have ideas about what you can do differently and hopefully better. Uh, there's a curious uh, question that I just had l listening to, you know, the interesting things that you were covering. Uh, you said that, you know, a lot of us don't really know what we end up doing. So when you were growing up, what is it that you wanted to do? <laughs> that's a great question. And um, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and my strategy, if I could call it a strategy, was to just try a little bit of everything. For example, I did an internship in, in a bank. And I found very quickly that I really didn't want to work in a bank. Uh, but I couldn't have known this, uh, of course. I have no idea what a bank is. And therefore, for me to to make that statement, I had to try it. So I went and I did an internship there. And I did some uh, work, uh, you know, in a media company, in a, in a, in a radio, actually. Uh, and I found, you know what, it's just also not for me. So it's not about any given experience. It's about doing small little projects. I definitely spent so much time trying different digital projects. Uh, you know, I would write all these little programs, all these little games. And that, that was just wonderful because... I truly love the innovation, the creativity and so forth that flowed through it. So I know for a lot of, you know, if you're a 10 year old child or so, you're probably looking at all the grownups and, and seeing them determined and, and doing things. And you can think, oh, they, they, they know, must know. But it's very often not the case. Very often you discover it, you don't know. So you try things and you're like, wait a minute, that's very enjoyable. I just want to do more of it. And so that's my biggest advice is I, I assure you that just like I didn't know, most people don't know. So the best gift that you can give to yourself is to just try things and have an open mind 
And the answers, they'll start coming to you just very, very naturally. Okay, our next question for you is, uh, what do you think, like, you know, in the poll also, you saw some interesting results coming in that a lot of them want to become entrepreneurs and they want to open their own organizations. So according to you, what's better to work in a firm or to open your own startup? That's a question from one of the students. That's a great question. I think, first of all, it's, it's really commendable that so many people want to start, uh, 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 you know, their own company, uh, and, you know, and, and you have so much time to try that and to do that. And, and my advice is twofold. I think first, just like I was talking about earlier, you don't know where the starting a company is for you. Uh, and so you should try it. If you want to, you should try it. And if you try it and you like Fantastic. You can continue to do it. You can, you can build different companies or products or apps or games or whatever you want to do. And, and that's a, you know, the entrepreneurial journey is a very rewarding journey. But if you discover that you don't, it's not for you, that you just, it doesn't speak to you, you know, because, you know, it's one thing to have the idea for it. It's another thing to actually do it, right? It's, it's a different experience. So if you discover that it's not for you, do not be alarmed, do not be concerned, just do something else. You know, that's the beauty of the modern world. You can do so many things. Uh, you can be a creator, you can, uh, you can work at a company, you can just do so many different things, so many industries, so many products. So again, I would say starting companies is truly wonderful. It is not for everybody, but it can be very rewarding if it is for you. So for those that want to try it, I, I want to encourage them to give it a shot and to not give up. You know, it's hard. So give it a real shot, do, do your best. And if you then discover, you know what, I'm not getting enjo enough enjoyment out of it. Don't even think twice. Just move on to something that gives you more enjoyment and, and you arrive at a good place eventually. The last question that we have for you uh, is more on the contribution to society and community. So we won't often think about it, but what do you think, you know, uh, how can games contribute to society and community? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a really wonderful question. I certainly think about it a lot. And I think that games are one of the best social glues that we have. You know, what's truly amazing about games is that you just, you're just excited and immersed in an experience and you get to make friends and learn to collaborate internationally, globally uh, with all sorts of people. And so that sort of people coming together in games shine and are the best uh, because I have made friends uh, with people all over the world from Korea to the United States to Germany and of course in my home country of Bulgaria with folks and I've never met them actually <laughs> we just play together um, and we love playing together and I think that's a really special thing about games they're they're very uh, engaging uh, in a way that everybody can participate with and that's uh, that's truly special it, it doesn't really exist that much uh, outside uh, of games. And so I think that uh, games, in, when, they, when they're at their best, games bring us together. They help us be better personally, teaching us skills and, and, and so forth. They help us, you know, make new friends, uh, learn new things, but also as a society, as a, as a world, help us come together. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's truly wonderful. Wow. That was such a beautiful message. Okay, by the way, there are a lot of YouTubers who are sending us questions. And there's one which we really liked, which is how do you deal with rejection? So important to know that. <laughs> rejection is a constant companion in life. You don't have to be an entrepreneur uh, to be rejected, just to be clear. <laughs> uh, you can be uh, you know, rejected from a job or maybe you wanted to go to one school or take one class and you just couldn't quite make it. And I think that it's not easy to deal with rejections. I think that it requires kind of, you know, uh, uh, fortitude, it requires resilience. And, you know, uh, nobody enjoys rejection, but I think it's a very valuable teacher. And so what I would say is, uh, you know, do not uh, ignore it <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's hard to deal with rejection, uh, but try to, try to learn from it. Um, rejection teaches you something. Maybe it teaches you that you should have done something differently. Maybe it teaches you that how to be better, or maybe it teaches you, you know what, this isn't the place for me anyway. Uh, that actually happens a lot with schools. When you apply to different schools, it, it can be hard to understand what different schools are good at, but actually different schools are definitely specializing in different things. And so um, whatever the situation may be, that's an educational rejection, a personal rejection, a career-related, career professional 
rejection. Unfortunately, rejection is, is there always. Uh, it's just part of life. But I think that it can just teach us so many different things. And so I would say, uh, you know, share with your parents, share with your friends. Do not try to, you know, bottle it in. Try to work through this together and see what did I learn from this rejection? Every rejection is an opportunity to learn how to do something differently and hopefully better so that the next time you, you get in or you do the thing you wanted to do and, and then you overcome those rejections. And by the way, when you overcome the rejection, you feel this incredible uh, sense of accomplishment. So they, they make accomplishments also feel much more important. Can you imagine a world that whatever you wanted to do, you could just do it? I mean, that would be so boring. There would be no challenge, but overcoming the challenge, that's very special. And so uh, do not fear rejection, uh, you know, work to, to overcome it. Uh, and, and you learn a lot, a lot along the way. Wow. Then we just, uh, you know, want to go on and on. And we know there are a lot of other questions, but we will also have our young visionaries back who've been patiently uh, waiting and we would love for you to stay back because our young visionaries and our CEOs for the day would love to have an interaction with you. So can we get back our young visionary, Advait, please? We know you've been patiently waiting. How did you enjoy the session so far? You, I'm sure I saw you and you were like really hooked onto it. So what did you learn from it today? So I learned that um, gaming um, can actually help you like what you want to be and like it will help you in thinking skills and like to help you believe in yourself. Amazing, right? Coming from a 10 year old. So Advet is also a chess player, a swimmer and a piano player. So Advet, we can't wait for you to present your idea. Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Advet Chikla. I am nine years old from Germany. I am also a certified game developer from Moita Junior. Today, I'm pleased to present my app idea named Guided Balcony Gardening in front of all of you. Getting fresh Indian vegetables is a big problem in many countries. Of course, you can always buy them or order them online in Asian stores, but there's no guarantee if they're fresh or not. The same thing also happened with me. Here in Germany, it's also very hard to get fresh Indian vegetables. And when we ordered them, there weren't any guarantees if they were fresh. That's when I decided to plant my own vegetables, which allows in my kitchen and balcony space. I grew tomato, potato, coriander, and mint. I also used biofertilizer made from kitchen waste to help them grow. The vegetables tasted so much better than, than the vegetables we ordered online. But as the weather got colder outside, all of them died. And that's when I realized my mistake. I didn't have proper and enough knowledge to grow my own vegetables. That's when I decided to make an app that will give the detailed information how to grow your own vegetable and plants at home, utilizing your kitchen and balcony space from start till end. Now I will tell you how my app will work. My app will detect the user's location, followed by their season and weather condition, and give them the list of vegetables and plants that they can plant in that particular area. Once a user chooses a plant or vegetable, my app will give the detailed information how to grow that plant from start till end. There is a second option in which the user has to swipe to the other screen and type in a particular plant. Once the user enters a particular plant, my app will give the basic needs of that particular plant. For instance, how much water and sunlight it needs or what type of soil it needs. My app also, if the user has if the user faces any difficulties in finding the seeds or whatever they need to grow their plants, my app also has a link that when the user clicks on it, my app will take the user to Amazon or eBay where they can order anything what they need to grow their plants online. My app also provides a special feature um, which connects the user to other um, like-minded people in Facebook communities where they can exchange ideas or information. In this way, you can grow your own fresh vegetables at home, utilizing your kitchen and balcony space and stay healthy. I would also like to thank my teacher, Kiran, from whom I learned a lot. Thank you for listening to me. Wow, Adver, that was just fantastic. I know Dan is like dying to say something. Yeah, I wanted to say that I am trying to actually make my own little garden and I have uh, failed many times. So I cannot wait to... Uh, try your app and to learn how to do it. 
uh, I have some, I have definitely don't have your experience and your expertise here. You just looking at this picture, you, you've obviously, uh, you know, outdone me already, but I, I can say uh, this sounds like a wonderful idea. And I just wanted okay. to say congrats on, on you. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much. And Kiran, anything that you want to say? Uh, what a fantastic yes. student yes. you have. So yes, uh, very uh, so greetings to everyone. And yes, thank you, Purva, so much. So yes, so this is because of Advait that I am a part of this. And he has really, really made me proud. So Advait, from the day one that I have started with him, he has always been coming up with new ideas. He's always been making new things. So, you know, uh, apart from what he was learning in class, he was always doing something new every time. And apart from coding, I would like to say Advait plays the piano really well. So there were times in the class where he had played those lovely songs. So Shape of You is a song which is his and my both favorite. So he played that song a couple of times for me. And wow. also, uh, he is very good with Lego. He creates awesome in uh, awesome stuff with those Lego blocks, and he's really, really good at it. And coding, he yeah. is the best at coding. And at the age of nine, he is doing wonders with it. So hats off to you, Advait, and I'm really proud of you. Thanks, Kiran. Thank you, Purva. Thank you, everyone. Amazing. You have to play for us next time in the next event, Advait, for sure. Okay. Okay. So, perfect. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay. With that, we move to Manav, uh, our next young visionary. So, Manav, uh, we are waiting for you. And now, this is a student who is actually taking a lot of interest in science. And he has topped a lot of essay and speech competitions. His innovative vision revolves around managing footfalls within premises and improving social distancing measures. Uh, wow, Manav, we can't wait to welcome you. Hello, everyone. I am Manav Prashti. I study in Standard 5 in DAB Public School, Chandrasekhar Pur, Bhuvaneshwar. I am a Phi Junior student and I'm glad to introduce my idea named Be Safe Inside. We all have been to public places such as shopping malls, supermarkets, monuments, etc. And most of the times we know these places are overcrowded. Due to overcrowded places, we cannot maintain social distancing, which leads to the loss of lives in this COVID situation. Let me tell you, it is not only about the current pandemic scenario, but otherwise also too many people at a particular place might cause health issues such as suffocation, spread of communicable diseases and hygiene issues. The shopping malls or supermarkets should allow a presence of fixed number of people within the premises and should instruct a certain number of people to await their turn outside. The public places should attach a sensor along with a counter at the entrance and the exit. The sensor at the entrance and the exit should detect the passage of each person to the entrance and exit respectively and should increment or decrement the counter value by one for each person. The counter value should be visible through LED display. People outside should be instructed to wait till availability and should be mandated to maintain social distancing. Tailgating should be prevented in order to enable proper tracking of people at the entrance and the exit. I'm sure this idea is going to help in saving many lives. At the end, I would also like to thank my teacher, Surya Magdalen P, a lot to help me with this idea. Thank you so much for your patient hearing. Thank you, Manav. That was fantastic. And we hope you're enjoying the event. Okay, great. So with that, uh, we move to our next uh, you know, event, which is the CEOs for the day. Uh, we have the remaining winners here with us. So can we have them all on the screen, please? So we know, uh, Dayan, they've just been waiting to speak to you. Dayan, you're a CEO, you have been a CEO, and we have these young CEOs. Okay, so uh, is there something that you would like to ask them? Well, I want to ask how they are uh, kind of uh, managing 
the day to day. I think it's very hard to be a CEO. There's a lot to do. And so I'm certainly very curious how they're approaching doing the many, many things that you have to do when you're in. Can any, any of the young CEOs answer that? Decode that for the young. Like, how do you be a CEO? What do you manage? Julian, would you want to answer? We are basically, CEOs are chief executive officers. We're basically, basically like, kind of like the leaders of the company. We, like the manager of managers. Wow. So we're the manager of managers. We manage everything. Okay. Our next question to all of you and anyone, any kid can answer that. Okay. Why do you love playing games? Um, I like playing games because I just, I just enjoy it all around. It's something that I just really like to do. Okay, great. I like to, can... I like to play um, a lot of video games with my friends. Awesome. And I like to like to hang out with my friends a lot. So. Okay, so love to play video games and hang out with your friends a lot. Okay, now uh, kids pay attention. What did you enjoy learning while building games? Can any of our young CEOs answer that? Mohammed uh, Zayan is also on. I know he wanted to answer this. So Mohammed, you can unmute yourself. I enjoy my because I was building games. I enjoyed that I was doing something productive. Wow. Because I was learning something in a fun way. Fun way. So in short, I was learning, I was playing, I was having fun. That too at the same time. Amazing. So you learned, you had fun at the same time. Any other kid wants to add that? Why do you love playing games? I like playing games because it helps me to learn while having fun. And games also improves my critical thinking and problem solving skills. That was fantastic. So, ladies and gentlemen, this was our young CEOs. Dan, any anything else that you want to say for them? I just want to wish them luck to say how impressive everything you're doing is. I think it's very special, and and I'm glad you're having fun while learning. And I just want to again wish you luck uh, going forward. Hope you create many exciting things. Um, Minecraft, the game Minecraft, because first of all. I can make huge builds like the Roman Colosseum and also um, make rockets that actually work. Wow, rockets that actually work. Amazing. Adve, you're on mute. I know you wanted to say something as well. Can we hear something from you? What games do you like? Okay, I like playing um, open world games such as um, Minecraft where you can explore how you will. Like you said, you can make choices on your own, like like um, Breath of the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on um, Nintendo Switch or Minecraft wow. on literally every single console gaming console. Amazing. And Kalia, did you also tell us what you like the most? I like playing Roblox the most because it, it has multiple games and it, you never get bored of it. So... Oh, so you never get bored of them. Okay, great. So Madhav uh, was here as well. And Madhav has been quiet unless he said something. And Devi as well. So we would love to hear from the two of you. The audience is really waiting for both of you to speak. Madhav, Actually, what do you... My favorite games are uh, Among Us and Scribble.io because you never get bored of them. And I really like playing games because uh, I do have fun playing them and it nurtures our creativity and it shows our quick reactions to the situation of the game so you can actually win them. Amazing. Coming from you, Madhav, that was amazing. So Davi, I know you've spoken, but is there any parting message that you want to give to the audience? Anything that you want to tell them that they should do? Any messages for anyone? That you should keep on having questions and keep on having a big, big mind on curiosity and keep on working hard. Okay, great. They, they really are CEOs, Dan, I'm sure, right? <laughs> it's like, you know, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> discussions happening here. Okay, on that note, thank you so much, kids. We just simply loved interacting with you, our little CEOs, and all the best for your future. 
we know that we asked you three clues for the treasure hunt. Does everybody remember that? Okay, so clue one. I was created due to a coding error in a famous game. Clue two. I got so famous, they incorporated me in the logo of the game. And clue three. I appear in Minecraft anytime, explode and cause damage. And the answer is Creeper. And the winners are Krut Krutartha and Rehan Siddiqui. Congratulations. Very well done. We are so proud of you. Okay, so with that, uh, we know we are four minutes uh, over time, but let me just thank our lovely audience for staying put with us today. We hope it was very enjoying for you just as it was for us. And uh, YouTube, by the way, burst with the response. So we are loving it. And there aren't any parting comments for the audience from you. And we could just call it a day. I just want to thank uh, everybody and, and, and the organizers for the opportunity to be here. And I want to wish everybody best of luck. I hope you enjoy playing games and learn valuable skills at the same time. Okay, brilliant. So thank you so much. And we are going to look forward to your uh, to having all of you at the next Creator Space event. On that note, uh, this is your host, Purva, signing off. Have a fantastic night ahead and a lovely Sunday. Take care, everyone.